So I just saw a new horror movie, a Shudder exclusive, Host. And no, not the Stephanie Meyer, Saoirse Ronan starring movie, Host, and not The Host, the Boom Jong Ho monster movie, Host. <laughs> Let's do a shot, girl, to us. Okay, everyone get in. Three, two, one. Have you ever done anything like this before? I've never done this over Zoom. So this is a Zoom horror movie, which feels very reminiscent of the 2016 movie Unfriended, which was a Skype-themed horror movie that even got a sequel that managed to be worse than the, than the original, which I did not think was possible, but apparently it is. But Host is Zoom-themed in this time of coronavirus and Zoom, which it makes a lot of mention of, quarantine and corona. Not corona specifically, but quarantine. And the whole premise of the film is that some friends get together on a Zoom call and do a seance. It's an incredibly simple premise, and it doesn't even clock in at an hour long. It's 56 minutes. And the best thing I can say for it is that it feels like it's 56 minutes. It's not, it doesn't drag ever, and it gets its point and it gets out. It's a very simplistic movie, but for it's what it is, it works kind of well, actually. There are long stretches of this where I found myself legitimately having a very good time with it, and me, as a seasoned horror lover, there's a lot of things in this that I've seen before, and there's a lot of things in this that I've seen in other movies that it's pulled into this movie. And that starts with Unfriended. Now again, Unfriended is a Skype-themed horror movie where a group of friends get on a Skype call and have a game night. It's essentially the exact same premise, beat for beat, in these two movies. The big difference here, though, is that Host is not horrifically unlikable. Unfriended has nothing but unlikable characters doing unlikable things, being haunted by an unlikable ghost. So the villains of the movie are literally every single character. And right off the bat, that was something that I really enjoyed about Host, is that despite not getting great characterizations for really anybody, you like these people. They feel real in a way. Because you only have 56 minutes of this film, it has to get into things very quickly. So you get very, very simple setups for characters, which are in fact so sparse that they're barely existent at all. They all get on this call and they're yabbering. Some are more nervous about the call than others. Some are taking it more respectfully than others. And that sort of comes into play later on in the film. But other than that, the characters don't really aren't really fleshed out that much. Obviously, we're not physically together, but there's no reason why Spirit can't communicate over the internet. Nothing's gonna happen. As the film goes on, there is a little bit of a dynamic that develops between Haley, who you open the movie with, and Jenna, who you close the movie with. Those two, actually. Those two kind of have a little dynamic that takes place and is developed a little bit going forward. Jenna isn't taking things very seriously, and Haley is sort of the one setting all this up. She got this uh, spirit guide to come in, and she wants everyone to be respectful, and Jenna isn't. So there's a little dynamic there, but not a whole lot. But there is a spirit guide that's kind of guiding them through this seance, and the catalyst of the story is that this spirit guide is kind of guiding them along and telling them all these rules, which is a, a pretty good way of getting exposition out of the way through this character. And she says that uh, you have to take it seriously. If you offend the ghosts, then something will happen. And, and she kind of is vague about it. And Jenna, this character that Haley is on not great terms with, fakes like a ghost is around. She pretends as if a ghost is grabbing her and like touching her. And the, say, the spirit guide, the seance lady, gets kicked off the call randomly, and she admits that it was a fake. She said, nothing was happening, so I just had to make something happen. And all because of that one action, everybody dies, which is a fine catalyst to get into your story. I actually really liked that idea, because in an Unfriended movie, the whole crux or catalyst of that story is simply that the characters on the call bullied another character who became a ghost and then haunted their call. And that is such a lame and lazy excuse to get a, a plot going. 
oh, a ghost infected their Skype call. That's so stupid. But this movie smartly, I think, has all of these characters doing a seance in all of their respective houses. And because of one character's actions, the ghost kind of infects all of their houses because they're doing the seance connected. And so I think that works pretty well as a catalyst for your story. And as the scares start to slowly ramp up, they work pretty well. I think the scares earlier rather than later, especially, and I'll get into that in a minute because that's stuff I didn't care for too much. But the scares very early on, I think, are pretty effective, mainly because this film has no soundtrack at all. So when the scares happen, there isn't like a sting or a music punch that is emphasizing the scare. There's this great moment when a girl goes up into her attic and she's panning around in the attic and you kind of see these white feet dangling from the ceiling and she goes past them pretty quickly and then goes back and they're gone. And there's no music sting to alert the audience to the fact that something's there or has disappeared. And it's an effective little, little horror moment that if you blink, you'd miss it. And I love when horror movies do that. Spirit, we invite you to use us to pass on any communication. Is there anyone there? So there's a lot of great little horror elements in this, little scares here and there that I think really work and develop a creepy atmosphere for this. Now, the last act, the last maybe 20 minutes to 15 minutes, I think does a lot to undo what I liked about this, specifically the, the mood and the atmosphere of it. I think the atmosphere of this movie was kind of engrossing for the first 40 minutes or so, and I was really into it. I was loving that it was taking its time. I was loving that all of the scares were really simple but effective, but then there's a lot of jump scares near the end, and there's a lot of, like, the camera turns and something's right there. And there's like this creepy witch lady that they show at the end who's like, ooh, right next to the camera. And she looks so stupid. And they even do one of the most obnoxious things in any horror movie that any horror movie can do. And it's put a jump scare right before the credits. I, I think that's my least favorite horror trope at this point where you're, the movie's basically over and then there's just like a boo and then it's all, and then the credits run. I, ah. Oh. I hate that, and I, I hated seeing it here. I really wished that it was gonna go more of like the Blair Witch route, where the character's standing at the in the wall, and then the, other, the last other character sees them, and then the camera just kind of drops to the ground and the movie's ends. A really simple but highly effective horror ending. But no, here it's just a boo and you're scared and the movie's over. And it's so obnoxious, especially in a movie that had so many other effective little scares and, and moments in it. To have such a lame jump scare right at the end, is, it's like the, the air was let out of the balloon right at the end. And I was, I was with it, even though they had those little like witch jump scares and a couple other things. I was like, eh. There's a great one where a, a lady gets picked up in the air and her neck snapped and she drops in the pool. That was awesome. But then it immediately falls out with a jump scare. And I'm like, ugh. So that's the problem, I think, with the movie as a whole is that sometimes it's effective and sometimes it treads too much into the boo, gotcha moments, the gotcha moments. And I do wish this was this premise, this plot was developed a little bit more which would give the characters a little bit more uh, room to breathe and to grow and to make them a little bit more full-bodied. There's this little moment right near the beginning where one of the characters has a fight with her boyfriend and then he just disappears right up until the end and I wish that was maybe taken a little bit further. There's a lot of little things I think you could do to fill this movie out a bit and to make it a feature length, like 90 minutes. I think you could actually get there with this premise with just a couple of tweaks. I'm gonna turn the filters off, come on. But why? Why would you do that? T tone it down a couple of notches because the rest of the movie is so understated that having this explosive James Wan-esque ending just doesn't fit for me. So in the end, I'd give it a six though. I still really enjoyed it. And there's a lot of moments in this that I legitimately liked and was spooked by. Not, not really, but like I, I went, whoa, that's a cool moment. So yeah, you go watch it. It's a Shutter exclusive. It doesn't even take up an hour of your time. It's worth it, I would say. So yeah, that's it. See you later.